How's it going? I'm Ina Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so... Still don't know when I'm going back to work. <laughs> Probably going to start a lot of these with, with that um, at the moment. I mean, hopefully, hopefully not too many more. Hopefully not too many more. Um, fingers crossed for back to work in July, but you know, as it sort of stands at the moment, I still don't know when I'm going back to work. So, means I've been doing a lot of writing. <laughs> um, so I've still got the two two writing projects going on. I'm still definitely writing uh, for both of them every single day. Not necessarily doing a full scene for the third part in the um, Shadows Beneath the Light collection book. Um, certainly writing a good chunk most days. Um, and the way I'm kind of working it with that one at the moment is I'm writing a complete section of the scene. Um, that way if the scene needs to be a little bit longer, um, or there's sort of like a beat change within the scene, I've got the time to sort of go away, think about how I'm approaching that beat change, and then, you know, going from there. Uh, this is partly because I was noticing that the scenes were ending up either looking a little bit rushed or being on the shorter side, whereas when I was kind of like going, uh, you know what, um, instead of trying to do, you know, trying to tackle a big long scene or having lots of little short scenes. Um, why don't I sort of get to a certain point and stop and then, you know, continue it the following day um, and then and sort of like build it from there, which again goes along with much more how it's going to be when I do go back to work because I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm rarely going to have time first thing in the morning to finish a complete scene. Um, quite often, so I need to get sort of back into that mind frame of taking a break whilst I'm sort of writing a scene and then coming back to it uh, either the following day or a little bit later um, in order to complete it. And actually that does help a lot because um, because it means it's sort of like floating there in the back of your head a little bit and you're sort of focusing on the ideas. And one thing I have found with the whole writing a chapter day process, which is what I've done with the uh, spin-off books, is that sometimes I'm not totally sure where the story is going next um, because I don't have that sort of, you know, stops, you know, that sort of uh, constant thinking about uh, where the where the story currently is that I get a little bit more from not finishing a scene, if that makes sense. Who knows? Um, we said that I have found my stride uh, certainly with the this third book <laughs> in the spin-off collection now um not saying that I don't quite know where it was going before but it was a case of um because it has a time skip on from the the previous two books that I've, I've written for this little collection um it, I needed a sense of, you know, uh, getting to know these particular characters and re-establishing the world as it would be three years on from the events of Rowan. Um, so, you, you know, you need a little bit of setup, you need a little bit of getting to know the characters, you needed a little bit of, well, this is what normality is, but, you know, you can see something is sneaking in beneath the surface and you can see the, sense that the setup is kind of building through and, and sort of playing through. And then finally, it was like, boom, time to, to kick this up a gear and sort of work towards the the climax and the ending of, of, of the story. Um, I mean, it, it's not going to be like a big, massive, I mean, none of, none of the books in the, the Neverwritten collection have a traditional climax, as it were. Um, likewise, none of the books in the, in the spin-off have what I would call a... a uh, definite, definitive sort of climax sort of thing. They all sort of build towards a certain events, but those events aren't necessarily the, the final events. They're just sort of like, poof, explode, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, they're just sort of like, you know, the, 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 the climax of the story in a sense, 
and then you get the a little bit of the aftermath um, afterwards kind of situation uh, definitely in in Toby that that seems to be what, what happens where you get like this and again it's sort of like this sort of, you get these little hints going all the way through that you know there might be something more going on in the background and then you get the um, moment and actually that oh now I'm uh, I'm one of these writers I do write a lot of very tough scenes um, very difficult scenes to sort of process um, this was one of this is one of my one of the scenes I found a bit the hardest uh, to kind of write um, one of the chapters I've, I've sort of found the, the hardest to 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 have ever written and um, and in, in in a lot of different ways, um, and you know, this is somebody speaking as somebody who wrote Hyena Boy. Uh, so anybody who has read Hyena Boy, you'll know that there are some very tough, difficult scenes and difficult moments um, in that particular book. Um, but there's just something about this particular chapter in Toby that the the first time I I sort of wrote it. Um, the first time I sort of wrote it, <laughs> but when I wrote it, I did sort of that evening um, just kind of need a little bit of time to just process the fact that this was a chapter that I'd, I'd, I'd written. It was um, it was a very difficult chapter to, to sort of written. And, and then obviously I've gone through and I've edited it a couple of times since then. Um, the first time I sort of edited it was the initial time um, after I'd sort of written it. And then obviously I've, I've edited it again since because I'm editing these books at the same time. Um, these are probably going to come out next year instead of the Shadow and the Light ones, depending on how much time I get for everything. Uh, these ones are ready. Um, they just need to be edited and, and, and stuff like that. So yeah, maybe may shaking up my plans for what I'm releasing next year. But I will still be releasing multiple books next year as I'm still planning to do this year. Really need to get my... Uh, Cup guy into gear, <laughs> really, really, really do. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, sort of like writing the scene initially is one of the one of the toughest scenes. I uh, one of the toughest scenes, one of the toughest chapters that I've I've kind of had to had to to write because uh, um, I think I think the reason it is is because even though even though there's sort of a little bit of uh, there, there are clues sort of riddled through the book that you know something's not right. Um, when the moment actually happens, it's very out of left field for the main character. So what's making it difficult is that that sense of shock that the main character is is having to experience in that moment because their perception of reality has just been completely thrown out the window and I think that's one of the reasons why it makes it made it such a difficult uh, chapter to write because even though I sort of was aware from at least a couple of chapters before I was probably heading this in this direction um it is a complete not a complete tonal shift but it, it's that sudden that impact of the moment because you've got you know everything is sort of almost having this rose tinted sort of layer to sort of put onto it and then all of a sudden you're sort of crashed into this this particular chapter and, and, and into this particular um, section of, of the story where it's just, oh, okay, <laughs> we're dealing with this now. All right, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that, that's, I think that was one of the reasons why it, it was a particularly hard chapter to write and that's certainly the first couple of times that I edited through it. Um, it wasn't sort of necessarily the easiest thing to sort of edit through either because of that that very sort of impactful change. But it was also sort of a very necessary change for the development of, of Toby as, as the main character. Um, it was a very sort of, I mean, he, he was he's kind of almost reaching that, that sort of point in the story where he is considering uh, reaching out to certain members of his family. Um, but this, this is a thing that kind of, yeah, it, it, it's one of those sort of moments which kind of, um, 
basically reevaluates the the entire situation and yeah it it, it yeah <laughs> um bizarrely though on the, the sort of the complete other end of the scale um because obviously my, 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 my wonderful friend Jade does read, um, does read the stories and although she did find that a particularly difficult chapter to read um, because, you know, I, I'd already forewarned her um, that it was going to be a difficult chapter um, and stuff like that, she actually finds Rowan and a lot of moments in Rowan to be, I mean, this, this is one of the few times where she has actually said that she's not sure if she <laughs> she's the right person to be, uh, be reading along um, one of the books that I'm, that I'm uh, writing. And bizarrely, I find Rowan, <laughs> I find Rowan's story a lot easier to deal with. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I mean, I get it. I, I get um why from her point of view it is the the worst situation um i i do sort of understand that but rowan's story has kind of been built with that tension in it and that that's kind of the difference between that moment in toby where most of the time things are on a fairly even keel um and the issues and the problems and everything else is very internalized um for for the character and then suddenly boom there's this this huge external thing um that he becomes aware of that like shifts everything that's going on in the story and sort of leads the story then towards its conclusion um whereas with rowan the 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 thing has sort of like been building from the beginning the danger the threat of the story has always been external from the beginning. Yes, there and like in, in both stories, there is the, the sort of the balance between the internal stuff and the external stuff. But in Toby, I'd say that it's more the internal stuff that you're dealing with. And in, in Rowan, it's more the outside threat, the external threat that is kind of the focus. So with Rowan's story, you get this, this tension kind of building from very early on. And I'm now going through my first proper edit of, of Rowan. Um, like even from like the second chapter, you can see the threat is is there. It's in the background. It's it's external thing. It's this thing that you know the main character can't quite explain. Um, and it builds and it builds and it builds and it builds. So for me, that is an easier scenario to build to to deal with because you've got that sort of slow building through and you've got that tension sort of slow building through. So it, I guess it's a kind of a point of. I guess the point of difference is one is set up not exactly like a horror, <laughs> but if, if you know, one is sort of like a jump scare and the other is a slowly building horror, even though neither book is actually a, a horror book, they, you know, they are young adult magical realism type stories, um, so neither one of them is actually, is actually horror um, per se, even though I, I would say that Rowan's book probably has some horror, <laughs> probably has horror elements um, in in terms of that it is all about that tension that gets built and that gets built and that gets built and that gets built, but then the resolution happens and it's, it's yeah no it's it's I mean, the the length of time that you get the the resolution and and, and stuff over and it's not as I said it's not written as a horror it's not you know it's taking the idea of you know the the unseen and threatening um it's taking the idea of the fact that horror is is all about creating an unsettling atmosphere it, it's it's got all those elements in it but it's not actually horror <laughs> but i think that's why i find rowan was a much easier story for me to write and to, and to deal with than uh toby was because rowan's story has been built and designed to work with those shocking elements and those shocking moments, whereas the shocking moment in, in Toby is almost out of nowhere. I mean, like I said there, there are hints and there are suggestions like from early on the story that, yeah, you can kind of see something going on. Um, and there are little hints and there are little you know, moments that something's not quite right. But it's still a little bit out of left field when it does come in um, because it, it's supposed to catch the main character off guard. So, you know, 
at the same way. Although, like, the readers can kind of go, uh-huh, uh, that's, that's, that's a bit weird, that's not quite right. Um, because, you know, it's, it's designed to catch the main character off guard. There's not, like, loads and loads and loads and loads of foreshadowing for it, because, it, yeah, the whole point of it is it's supposed to be an impact moment. Whereas with Rowan, it's, again, you're in a situation where it's sort of supposed to catch the main character off guard, the main character can also see that something's not right with the situation or something might be going on. Um, gets what completely wrong? Um, because he's fixated on it being an internal thing and not being an external thing. But he's still got that building there that, you know, the, the main, main character isn't necessarily going to be caught 100% off guard. Because the main character can definitely see something's not right. He just can't necessarily figure out what it is until it's too late. Um, so I think that's kind of why I, I find that situation probably easier to, to deal with. And it, it probably comes down to, to and in a lot of ways, the way my brain works. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's why I'm sort of, yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm sort of, you know, with, with the third book, which is LJ's book. Um, why it was important to sort of have that establishment of the world and have a lot of hints going on in the background um, and then sort of having that finally sort of building towards the, the sort of breaking point but the breaking point is kind of more halfway through the book <laughs> more, more closer to being halfway through the book um just because uh just because you you have to re-establish what this world is um, after the after the ending of, of Rowan because you, you are aware that the world has changed because the events that go on in Rowan itself the world has changed um, quite drastically um, so you have to establish what the new normal for um, the world in which narration exists actually is and, and you, you do actually go back to it is actually set this time primarily in Navratan again because that is where LJ lives and works um where she grew up as well she's she's a Navratan girl um but yeah you need to take that time to establish what the new reality is for all the people living in this world after this event at the end of Rowan um, because the, the three year sort of gap, and it's about a three year gap, um, is sort of about the right length of time for a lot of these things to, to have come into effect. And it, it's a realistic length of time for the world to have sort of decided where it's supposed to be, this particular situation. Um, so you take the time to, to sort of establish that and, and little bits of that get fed uh, throughout as well. You need time to establish who LJ is as a character and what her motivations are and, and, and various things like that. Um, so again, uh, LJ does make an appearance in Toby. She does not make an appearance or she does not make a... Uh, I don't think she's got any lines in Rowan. I think she might probably well be there in the background at some point, especially uh, towards the end. She doesn't actually have any lines in Rowan, uh, so yeah, so it's uh, you, you kind of have to establish who, who LJ is. Um, and the thing with uh, Toby and with, with Rowan is that Rowan is a main character in Toby, um, he is a, a force in Toby. In fact, he gets his own kind of arc in Toby, um, as well, and um. Toby does play not a major role in Rowan's story, but Toby is definitely in a presence in, in Rowan's story. Toby is definitely in a lot of, of the scenes, well, not a lot of the scenes, but Toby is definitely there and is established as being around um, within, within Rowan's story. So those two stories are a lot more interconnected. So, you know, reading one to the other um, or one in the back again, um, if you read them in the other order, you know, think that you don't necessarily need lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of establishing who these characters are because 
you establish who they are in Toby and then you follow it up in, in Rowan. Now, because LJ plays such a minor role in those two books, you've got to establish who LJ is and what her reality is, because her reality doesn't match with what Toby's reality is by the end of uh, Toby or what Rowan's reality is at the beginning of Rowan. Um, she has a very different sense of, of reality to, to both of them and she has a very different mindset to both of them as well. Um, because of how she perceives the world um, and a lot of that is is sort of vital to her character um, but it all falls in it to, uh, to, to various things in um, the other reason that it's set three years later um, so Mild spoilers for Hyena Boy. Mild spoilers if you don't want to be spoiled for Hyena Boy, pause this video now or skip to the end. Um, but LJ has the epilogue in Hyena Boy. Last few pages. I don't know how much it works out for in, in Kindle, <laughs> not checked, but the last few pages is taken up by LJ's epilogue. LJ's story is set after the point in time that she has written that. So that's, that's, that's all the spoilers that I'm going to give people. So if you've read Heine Boy, you'll understand what her reality is at that point in time or the point in time where things have started um, in L or where the point in time those things begin in um, LJ's story. If you've read The Colours I See you'll probably have a better idea um, as to what her reality might be um, at, as of the start of as of the start of the uh, of her own story but it needed to be set after that point so, <laughs> so that I would not ruin the continuity <laughs> plus it also it also makes sense um to kind of establish why her epilogue is written the way that it is um given everything that people will learn um throughout reading the four narrating books and the other two spin-off books to sort of like be going okay how is you know how is this girl's sense of reality in your this why why is she questioning these things um but yeah no it, it made sense to sort of set it after the epilogue had been written um so as to not to in continuity amongst other reasons um, but again, as, as I said, it made sense just in the reality of, of the world that I'd established to sort of give it that little bit of, of, of a gap um, from the ending of Rowan so that the world itself has time to re-establish its new normality, given the way that the, that particular book kind of comes to its end. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, this has been a lot of talking about the, the spin off books. Um, so I'll probably say that this one is about talking about spin off books. Um, I hope it's made you guys curious um, as you know to, to actually read those when, when those actually come out. Um, I think my game plan uh, at this moment in time is to get No Doors Allowed ready for release. Um, it will only come out in uh, Kindle format, which means it will be less work for my cover guy, who will hopefully not take forever to do the cover for it. <laughs> Alternatively, I might just do the cover for that one so that it comes out when I want it to come out. Um, then hopefully I will have 
uh, at least two of the books in the spin-off series ready for release at the beginning of next year, maybe even all three of them, because obviously I'm not taking me very long to write these at the moment. I, I still don't know if there's going to be a fourth one of those, it might just end up as being three. Um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, it all depends on whether or not I've got any ideas for a fourth one, although yeah, if, if I am going back to work at the beginning of next month, I probably won't have time to sort of write it at the speed that I've been writing it at, which, you know, I want to concentrate on the Shadows from the Light book. But yeah, my, my current plan is get No, no Doors Allowed ready for release, um, to also be working on the editing process for Toby Rowan and then also finished LJ, LJ as well. So those can be released probably towards the beginning of next year, um, at the rate that I'm going. <laughs> Um, I'll also be getting uh, We Giant. Oh, I've released the name of the fourth book. Okay, so the fourth book in the Never Asian series is called We Giants. Um, so yeah, I also still plan to release We Giants next year um, because No Doors Allowed definitely needs to be released before the um, spin off books. That one is definitely, definitely going to be released before. They will be released, um, hopefully, as I said, before the end of this year. And then We Giants can be released afterwards um, in order to complete the narration series. And the, the, there's nothing in the spin off books that ruins anything in We Giants if you've already got ne No Tools Out out there. Um, so, yeah, I, that, that's my plan at the moment. Um, the Shadow Beneath the Lights books will, I'm working on them. Um, might get released next year, might be pushed back a little bit longer. Like, that's really all dependent on, you know, how much time I've got once I do go back to work. Fingers crossed that I do go back to work. Um, yeah, that's, that's very much my game plan at the moment. Um, so release Snow Doors Allowed before the end of this year. Get the spin-off books ready for release probably the beginning of next year and then to release no, um, then to release We Giants before the end of next year. So, that you know, that's, well, that's a decent amount of books to be working on. And then my other plan is to get my cover guy doing my covers for me for, <laughs> for, for the Dollmaker Sons books because those really need to be released soon. Really need to be released soon. Alright, okay, I hope you guys have found this one sort of interesting and in, at, at the very least sort of intriguing. Um, I hope you're looking forward to seeing what I'm going to be talking about next time. Fingers crossed by that point in time I will know when I'm going back to work um, and I will see you guys next time. See ya! <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!